Thanks for tuning in. This is Thomper Be Thompin'. And in this video, I'm going to hopefully help you decide whether a battery powered electric chainsaw is all the saw you need for clearing trail. So I'm here on my property. I got my ATV. We do have a few logs down blocking some of the trails. I'm going to use this saw to hopefully clear them out. So I have plenty of video of the saw in action. But I want to speak to specifically this DeWalt model. It's the DCCS620. You may have another letter or number on the end of that depending on whether you get bare tool or the combo kit with the battery and the charger. I'm gonna compare the saw to a gas powered saw or two. Uh, we'll talk about price and things like that, but for the most part, I wanna talk about the pros and cons specific to this saw. Real quick, price, I paid $140, $50 on Amazon for the tool, tool only. I think I got a special on it. Since I already have a lot of other DeWalt tools and batteries, I was good to go there. Now, price-wise, I think the, the, a comparable saw that's actually worth your money might be the Echo CS310, 310. That saw is similar in bar length, although you can go up to a 16-inch bar, and it puts out pretty similar power too, maybe a little bit more, but price-wise, those two are right in the same ballpark with each other. So one of the really cool things about these chainsaws is that you can use whatever batteries you have laying around for it. So if you've already got DeWalt tools, Milwaukee, whatever, Ryobi, just buy the saw for that battery line. So this uses DeWalt's 20 volt batteries, even though they're just 18 volt like everybody else. It's just a marketing scheme. So you yeah, pop it in there. You can use the two amp hour, the four amp hour, the five. I've got a five in here and that'll just give you more runtime with the chainsaw. They say that a five amp hour battery is supposed to give you 90 cuts through a four by four. This saw is tool free for changing out chains and changing out chain tension. Something I really like. Makes it a little bit flimsy. And you've only got a single threaded post and then just a short stubby post that the bar will rest on. So if you're doing really tough work and with this thing, you may want to look at a different saw, but this is more of a light duty. And this is just how you adjust your chain tension with this knob right here. And then everything just bolts right back up. And just because you're using an electric chainsaw doesn't mean you're free of all fluids. You still got to put bar oil in. You just twist this off, pour bar oil in, and you're good to go. More on this in a little bit. So this saw does have a chain break, just like any other. However, in order to engage the saw, you can't do it with the chain break on. There's also a left side uh, unlock button here that you have to press before you depress the trigger to get it moving, but in order to move the chain, you actually have to pull that chain brake off, hit your little unlock button, and then you can pull your trigger. It is not variable speed, it is simply one speed. So it comes on all of a sudden, and that's it. The chain brake works pretty good. Stops it immediately, so no worries there. One of, you, one of the cons, are these uh, these dog teeth here? It just has these little tiny plastic things that are pretty useless. I mean, they'll they'll help you a little bit to uh, to dig in and get traction on a log, but for the most part, those aren't going to do a whole lot. And on your bar oil, you do have a little see-through transparent tank here, so you can see when you're running low on bar oil. So next, I want to talk about a few of the mods I've made to the saw in one major flaw with this thing. So it comes with a 12 inch bar and a pretty high quality chain um, that work really well. And I would, I personally think that between 12 and 14 inches is the sweet spot for bar length. I upgraded to an organ bar, 14 inches and a matching chain for, for this bar. So that's been really good for me so far. And the last significant mod I've made was inside this oil reservoir for the bar oil. When you twist this thing off, it has a tiny little tether on it, which keeps it from running away on you. So you just twist it off, let it hang, and you can fill up your bar oil. But you can see, here, let me pop this off real quick. Well, you can see up towards the top, I've got a tiny little O-ring on here. This little cap does not come with an O-ring. 
So from the factory, this little filler cap leaks like a sieve when you've got bar oil inside of this thing. If you store it standing up, it's gonna leave a pool of bar oil all over the place. So I constantly have to store mine like this with the filler cap pointing up. That alleviates all leakage issues. However, even with the O-ring that I put on there, I just went and got like a little small multi-pack from Home Depot and I picked one that was tight on it. I think it's like about five eighths or three quarters, something like that. But even with that O-ring, I stored it overnight standing up like this and it still had a small pool of oil. So if you've got a transport bag or a hard case, You've got to put all your batteries in bags. I put my bar oil in a bag. I put my extra batteries and chains inside of a bag because I don't want this thing leaking oil all over the batteries. Huge design flaw that DeWalt has to figure out. And in fact, it is so bad because it still leaks even with an O-ring in there that I would almost say look elsewhere at a different saw solely based on that. Search the internet everybody's having this problem. So I do have a regular gas powered chainsaw for more serious work that I do around here and something that I need to rely on because one of the other issues with these with battery electric uh, chainsaws and power tools in general is that you can't really have them out in the elements. So if it's raining or even a, like a light mist or a drizzle, well, I'm probably not gonna use this battery powered saw unless I can keep it inside the bag and just bring it out when I need it. Additionally, and the extreme heat uh, these things can crap out on you basically i had a dewalt trimmer uh, a weed eater that i was using and i was doing the sidewalk doing the curb and the, the electric motor just burnt up on me so it was a hot summer day i was using a couple batteries going through them and the electric motor just died so that's something to consider with these battery electric saws these gas powered saws from a decent brand like Echo, I know there's Steels, Husqvarna's, Echo's a pretty good brand at a pretty affordable price. I've had good luck with them so far, but there's some features on these gas powered saws that are just far superior. First of all, these dog teeth or these bucking teeth, they call them. These are much sharper, they're steel. They actually have a really sharp point on them. You've got two studs that are holding the bar on and swapping out chains is really easy doing a doing a tension where is it right here for for the echoes right here it's changing up your chain tension is really simple this thing has been bulletproof reliable for me you've got real quick little air filter changes should you need and it's ergonomically just far superior to this small dewalt saw the dewalt's not bad by any means but this is just better lastly one of the more important things that i didn't realize until i used a battery electric saw is having a variable speed trigger so you can start a cut and just get the chain moving a little bit before you then sink it in it's just nice to have that variable speed with the electric saw it's all or nothing and this cs 400 is approximately 300 to $350, depending on where you're buying it from and whether there's a sale or not. But Echo's CS310, very similar in price to this one, but it has much more of the better features that you find on the gas saw. So I'm gonna do a couple quick little cuts on this log just to show you the cutting speed difference. Both of the chains are nice and sharp and my gas saw is already warmed up. Something you don't have to worry about with these at all. However, the gas saw is, I just found out, pretty close to being out of gas. So it could bog down on us mid cut, but hopefully we'll make at least one. So here is the electric saw first. And now we'll do the gas. So a lot faster with the gas chainsaw, but the electric saw still did it pretty fast. So here's just a couple quick little tips of some other tools that I use. Loppers, man, these come in handy big time out on the trail, especially the extendable ones. 
You can get up high, reach, and clear new tree growth that's blocking your trail. Super easy to carry, really nice to have. This is called a Hookaroon. This one's made by Fiskars, although you can find them by tons of other brands online. Really, so this, I think this type of a tool was originally designed to pick up firewood without having to bend over. But what I use this tool most for is just putting it into a log like this out on the trail and dragging it. The next tool I take with me on any trail clearing trip is gonna be these little tiny wedges. These are cheapies off the internet, or maybe I got them at Home Depot, it doesn't matter, but any type of like a felling wedge, when you're dealing with logs that are on the ground and you only have a single saw on you, you can run into the issue of getting your bar trapped inside the, the log, whether you're cutting through a, a compression side of the, of the log and it all of a sudden pinches it, maybe you read the, the compression wrong, what you can do is you can make cuts inside the log, hammer in these wedges to keep these cuts nice and open so that your saw doesn't get trapped. Dealing with these logs on the ground is always tricky. Having a couple wedges, really cheap, makes it a little bit easier. So I'll take you along with me while I clean up this tree that's blocking our trail. It's kind of laying across diagonally. Starting to pinch the saw a little bit right here. So in conclusion here, this little DeWalt 12 inch saw sure is handy to have as a second saw. I cannot recommend it as your primary trail clearing saw. If you're in a very dry climate, maybe this is a more suitable option because you don't really have to worry about the elements too much, moisture affecting the battery and everything. But as an alternative, there are many other electric saws out there if you're interested in going that route, but I would highly recommend the Echo CS310. 
very similar in price. You can put a 16 inch bar on it versus this 14, which is probably maxing out the sauce capability. And it's gonna cut a lot faster and it's gonna be just as messy, quite frankly, because of this simple little oil plug O-ring issue where it leaks like a sieve. So I cannot recommend it as a primary, but if you are looking for a small little around the house, quick little trail clearing saw, this DeWalt's a good go.